Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your latest weather forecast for Thursday the 26th of June 2025. There's a lot to get through in today's weather forecast as well. In fact, we're looking at a strong storm setup now for the New South Wales East Coast. Could there be an East Coast low? There are still a few discrepancies in the forecast models. Rainfall is expected to impact the southwest of Western Australia and a few showers still coming through across North Queensland. All of the details plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things this morning over into the New South Wales East Coast. The severe weather is now leaving the southeast of Australia and that includes New South Wales. There's a few showers lingering here and there offshore but for the most part it is a cool calm and collected morning across New South Wales and also Victoria and Tasmania for that matter. In fact cool could be an understatement. Minus 8 degrees at Threadbow early this morning. Minus 6 at Mount Janini and minus 6 at Mount Buller as well. It was another very cold start. Not quite as cold as what some forecast models were suggesting but again a very cold start across New South Wales. We're expecting a few more cold starts throughout the remainder of this week and into this weekend before the humidity begins to build again and they'll keep temperatures a little bit more milder. So what are we expecting on the forecast side of things? Well, right now it's looking like we're going to be seeing uh, calm and collected conditions throughout the remainder of this week and you can see here through today and into tomorrow just a few showers here and there coming into the uh, areas north of Newcastle up through Foster and Tari and about as far north as Coffs Harbour and Lismore. A couple of showers also possible for southeast Queensland but that's another story. Uh, showers are going to continue through Friday and into Saturday. And in fact, the approaching uh, weak cold front could bring a couple of showers here and there to South Australia and Victoria. But as you can see, developing up into the north, we're expecting that southeasterly flow to begin bringing rainfall into the central parts of Queensland. That is going to result in a bit of moisture then going to slide down the Queensland coastline through Sunday and into Monday, meeting with more moisture coming in from the west over the Coral and the Tasman Seas. And this is classic East Coast low development. This is East Coast low development 101 here, lighting areas of moisture coming off Queensland and coming off the Coral and the Tasman Sea. It looks like through Monday and Tuesday, a complex low pressure system will then begin developing across a northern New South Wales coastline. It will then continue to slide down the New South Wales coastline through uh, uh, Tuesday, the first day of July, and then begin to mature through Tuesday night and into early Wednesday morning. Forecast model guidance has been a little bit here and there over the last couple of days. Right now, it looks like the main consensus is a low pressure system developing, like I said, from those two kind of bursts of moisture colliding with each other into the northeastern part of New South Wales and then sliding down the coastline through Tuesday, maturing through Tuesday night and developing into what could be classified as a proper east coast low through Tuesday night and into Wednesday morning offshore from an area of about Coffs Harbour or Grafton. This strong low pressure system through Wednesday and into Thursday will then begin to move offshore. It looks like it actually falls apart through Thursday, so it's not going to be a long-lived east coast low, just a couple of oh, maybe about 36 hours out to about 48 hours at most before sliding down towards New Zealand. And then by Friday and Saturday, the weather is pretty much clear and sunny again across New South Wales, southeast Queensland and Victoria for that matter. If we just pull this forecast back uh, towards Tuesday, you can see uh, the GFS forecast model also calling for a very, very similar forecast here. Both that kind of low pressure system developing from those moisture uh, kind of influences through Tuesday and into Wednesday, maturing Tuesday night and into Wednesday morning uh, offshore from the New South Wales coastline, then through Wednesday and Thursday, slowly pulling away from the New South Wales coastline and being dragged further offshore through Thursday and Friday where it will then fall apart. The Icon forecast model, not one that I generally use for weather forecasts like this, especially especially for East Coast lows, pretty much the exact same thing, uh, more or less, a bit of a weaker system expected there from the ICON forecast. And the Axis, uh, the Bureau of Meteorology's own forecast model, which generally is a bit bullish, especially in situations like this, also calling for an, uh, what's going to be an East Coast low at some point, but a bit further offshore from the New South Wales coastline. So why did I show you four different solutions? Well, that's to get a picture of model congruency. So this is when we have four different forecast models calling for a very similar thing, even if it is a little bit further out and a couple of days away on the forecast. Forecast. That means something is likely to happen. Now, what we can take away from those forecast models, all calling for that low pressure system offshore from New South Wales, is that something is expected to form. Whether it's an east coast low or a strong low pressure system, still a little bit uncertain at this point in time, but a subtropical storm system is expected to form south of a line of about Grafton and Lord Howe Island, kind of in this general pocket here, a little bit offshore from New South Wales, probably not as close as what some east coast lows can get, but we are expecting something to, uh, to form there 
at this point in time. What we're not 100% sure of is how far away from the coastline it's going to be and exactly how strong that system is going to be, which are the two main features in kind of determining the impacts for New South Wales. So going forward, everything that I'm going to say here in the forecast aspect of things and the expected impacts across New South Wales should be taken with a grain of salt at this point in time. It is a little bit too early to tell exactly what we can expect in terms of rainfall and wind speeds. Again, because this system is going to be a little bit further offshore from what a powerful east coast low can get towards the New South Wales coastline. And there are still those model discrepancies, especially between the east and and the axis, which are two main forecast models that I like to see congruency between when making a forecast like this. Nonetheless, though, let's do our best and see what we're expecting rainfall wise. So rainfall accumulations, as you would expect in a system like this, are going to be quite heavy across New South Wales, especially, especially into the mountainous regions adjacent to the East Coast. Four day rainfall accumulations from Monday the 30th of June out to Thursday the 3rd of July inclusive do state that we're going to be seeing rainfall accumulations between that two to 300 millimetre mark and under the wettest influences from this low pressure system. And of course, they're going to be in flood impacted regions north of Newcastle, up around uh, Tari and Kempsey. At this point in time, this is kind of the uh, kind of the uh, area, the, the kind of the ground zero for these uh, so, uh, sort of systems. When they develop offshore from New South Wales, this area here that I'm circling right now is kind of the ground zero for the heaviest rainfall accumulations and generally speaking, the area worst impacted by rainfall. Whilst they are starting to dry out around Tari, 300 millimetres of rainfall coming through in about 48 hours on Tuesday night, Wednesday and into Thursday morning is going to spell out bad news at this point in time. So this isn't a great thing to have on the forecast. And another thing that I I would like to add is those piping hot sea temperatures offshore from the New South Wales east coast as well that are going to drive up those rainfall accumulations significantly which means and you've probably noticed this on the forecast models as well over the last couple of months pretty much every time rainfall is on the forecast for New South Wales it always ends up being higher than what's expected or on that higher end of what's expected the last rainfall event that we had in early May they were calling for up to about six or seven hundred millimeters in places and again the wettest accumulations were six to seven hundred millimeters that's because those sea temperatures are very very warm offshore from New South Wales. They have came down a little bit because of those cold temperatures especially north of Sydney up around the Newcastle area those temperatures are a bit further towards normal at this point in time but there's still heaps of energy here for showers and rain vans to make the most of so it, it really doesn't matter there's going to be a pretty significant amount of rainfall if a low pressure system does form and hover close to the New South Wales coastline which at this point in time is about a 50-50 chance. I'm really going into detail about this because I want everybody to know exactly what could happen on the forecast and why uh, that could happen. I want everybody to be in the know at this point in time. So my recommendation is for those north of Oladula up to around Wollongong, you're expecting and looking at up to about 150 millimetres at this point in time. Even if the forecast changes quite dramatically, we wouldn't see more than about 100 millimetres in this region uh, anyway, because it looks like this storm system is going to be a little bit further north. And again, sea temperatures are looking a little bit unhealthy for a system like this that far south. Sydney looking at about 50 to 60 or 70 millimetres at this point in time. Still a little bit too early to tell. There could be heavier accumulations, especially in the west and up into the north. Heavier accumulations are expected to start north of Gosford up to around Newcastle, where falls up to 125 millimetres are expected. The Barrington Tops, Foster, Tari, and up towards Kempsey should run away with the heaviest accumulations at this point in time, with up to 200 millimetres now on the cards for this region. Rainfall accumulations north of Kempsey will be between that 50 to 100 millimetre mark up to around Grafton, where then they'll fall down to about 25 millimetres. But again, at this point in time, take everything with a pretty hefty pinch of salt. We're still quite uncertain in terms of the exactly what rain impacts can be expected. Wind is also going to be quite strong from this system here. In fact, it does look to be on the upper echelon of what we do normally see for an East Coast low with gusts between 100 to 125 kilometers an hour. Now on the wind accumulation forecast, which suggests the highest wind gust over the selected time period, again, the 30th of June out to the 3rd of July. Wind could be uh, the main player in this system here, especially if this does end up to, uh, to be a little bit further offshore. If we do see showers and uh, rain bands coming through, that which aren't going to be as uh, prolific in terms of the rainfall front for New South Wales. The wind threat could be a pretty significant one at this point in time, which as well goes without saying. Waves could also be quite a problem and uh, coastal inundation through Wednesday and into Thursday could also be quite problematic for the New South Wales mid-north coast. There's still a lot of discrepancies and a lot of uncertainties out there in the forecast modelling. So again, take this forecast with a heavy pinch of salt and make a, uh, consult other forecast agencies if you feel like you need to. What I've done now is just present the information. We're going to have some more refinements on it through tomorrow and into Saturday. In fact, by Saturday morning, I'll have 
have some definitive answers on what we can expect for New South Wales, rainfall-wise, impacts-wise, and where this system is going to be tracking at what times. But at this point in time, there's still a little bit too much uh, discrepancies between the forecast modelling to really uh, kind of place a thumb on it at this point in time. But what I've said in the forecast right now is what is most likely to happen, what is most expected to happen across the New South Wales coastline. Well, that is a long-winded section for New South Wales. Thankfully, there's nothing coming through behind this system, not at least for a couple of weeks. Just briefly, I want to touch up in far north Queensland. We do have those showers still coming through out of the southeast, and you can see 14-day rainfall accumulations, especially with rainfall coming through this weekend and into Monday. We could be seeing falls up to 100 or even 150 millimetres through parts of the Casper Coast and into the Daintree Rainforest. Also, some falls between 25 to 50 millimetres now on the cards as well, especially through later parts of this weekend. We could be seeing rainfall accumulations pile on through Sunday and into Sunday down in towards central and north Queensland with accumulations up around that 25 to 50 millimetre mark for places along the coastline, especially around Agnes Water, Gladstone, Yapoon, up towards Mackay and uh, the Whitsundays. And rainfall accumulations could also be up around that 25 or 30 millimetre mark further inland out around Charters Towers and then further north into the Cape York Peninsula, up around Croydon and Georgetown at this point in time. Again, just from a slow-moving rain band that's going to come through and materialise through Sunday and into Sunday. This can be very similar to the rainfall that they had about two and a half weeks ago up in the fun North Queensland. It wasn't heavy, it wasn't significant, but there were some healthy rainfall accumulations and that's probably the best comparison that I can, that I can draw at this point in time. In fact, it looks like a carbon copy of that and then up in far north Queensland, a few more showers coming out of the southeast. You can already start to see a bit of an increase in moisture further out to sea around Willis Island. Uh, but again, rainfall not expected to be serious and no flooding is on the cards at this point in time. Now let's pan things over towards the southwest of Western Australia where a significant weather system is expected to come in in about six or seven days from now. We do have a weird uh, low pressure system, frontal system now moving into the southwestern corner of Western Australia as well. And that's gonna bring some slow moving shower bands coming in this afternoon and into this evening, pretty much only for the southwest capes with falls between 25 to 40 millimeters expected for those regions. It's gonna be a bit deceptive because further north, especially around Bunbury and for locations further north of uh, there, we're expecting partly cloudy if not sunny conditions, which means it's not going to feel like there's a low pressure system down there, but expect some healthy rainfall accumulations here and there down into the southwest capes. For the last day of June on Monday, we're expecting a low pressure system to then begin developing across the West Australian coastline. That's going to bring some showers here and there to the southwest capes, slowly making it up into the lower west through Monday night and into Tuesday morning, but not really into the Perth metro area in a significant manner. Another strong low pressure system will then begin moving into the southwest through Wednesday and especially into Thursday. This is expected to be a strong strong cold front, not so much in the wind threat uh, side of things, but definitely in uh, terms of the rainfall side of things. This will pack a punch, especially on that rainfall side of things. As I've just said, Thursday and Friday, they look to be quite wet showers and storms, especially through Thursday, clearing on Friday, and then that high pressure ridge then beginning to build, which will give a couple of days of dry conditions before another strong cold front comes out at around the 9th or the 10th of July at this point in time. But again, the forecast modeling on that could also be wrong and could also change. Rainfall accumulations over the 14 day period still looking very healthy across southwest and western Australia, especially into the Perth region and also down into the southwest capes. Falls up to 150 millimetres on the cards down there. Down onto the southwest capes, plenty of rainfall to be talking about down there. And then into the Perth metro area between 60 to 100 millimetres expected, depending on whereabouts you are and how close you are to the hills. Of course, they're expecting high rainfall accumulations, especially through Wednesday and Thursday when that stronger weather system comes through, which we could be seeing up towards 50 or even 60 millimetres for in the wettest of locations into the Darling Range around the Perth area area. Rainfall accumulations will also be healthy further north, 25 to 50 millimetres expected over the next 14 days. North of Perth up through Lamsell and Durian Bay, and as far north as about Geraldton and Calbarry, in fact. Rainfall accumulations, though unfortunately just not looking flash across the wheat belt, and it is starting to get a little bit problematic much further out into the wheat belt regions. We're talking about those fringe areas towards the east of Southern Cross, uh, or towards the south and the east of Southern Cross, where the rainfall is beginning to become a little bit of a problem at this point in time, and you can actually see on the drought monitoring map, they are in a little bit of a rainfall uh, efficiency out there. Uh, again, we're not talking about some major wheat belt communities out here. In fact, it's really kind of out of the wheat belt, thank goodness, because it is far enough out of the wheat belt as to where the rainfall isn't that much of a problem. But it is still a little bit of a concern where rainfall is now starting to fall a little bit below average. And if this line does creep further towards the west, we are going to see some problems across farming communities into the fringe uh, areas of the wheat belt. Yeah, you can see soil moisture values looking pretty disappointing through there. They will get better as we push the forecast forward out towards 
towards next week, uh, especially as we do see some rainfall developing into this region of the wheat belt. But again, they would like to see about 50 millimetres out here coming through in a two week period. And unfortunately, that's not what I'm going to be reporting on for the next two weeks. There's no good rainfall on the sites for this region of Western Australia. So again, it is starting to get a little bit problematic in these regions. It isn't dire, especially compared to South Australia and Victoria, which are still in some incredible drought conditions. Uh, I couldn't believe it driving south towards Streaky Bay through the agricultural regions of South Australia. And I checked later, they weren't even in the worst impacted regions. I couldn't believe how dry it was. In fact, I've never seen Western Australia so dry, even in summer. Uh, there was no colour in the grass. It was completely grey. So the drought across South Australia really is desperate. Uh, and it really is quite sad to see. And unfortunately, it is going to have a massive toll on the agricultural communities through South Australia and into the western part of Victoria. Uh, fortunately, though, they are now starting to look a little bit healthier across the western side of Victoria. So, yeah, I guess that is a bit of good news at this point in time, but really looking quite bad across parts of South Australia, especially. On that note, that is going to do it for today's weather forecast update. If you feel like I've missed anything or if you've got any feedback or comments, please do leave them in the comment section down below. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. The names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them, so of course, their support is always much appreciated. That is going to be all for me today. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.